plugged with Nikki Marie midweek mashup. I mean, who's better to mash shit up with than my girl, Kate <laughs> Murray, big time adulting? Your ass shaking. Was it yesterday's post or this morning? Yesterday, yeah. That the twer- is that twerking or is I that- don't really know. No, that's sort of like a variation on a twerk. I feel like it's not the real twerk, but it's just it was good. It was great. like listen. I know you want a little more bounce in that. <laughs> You're working with what God gave you. Yeah, I just fun. if I had more, it would be bouncing. It would be bouncing. Have you be honest? Have you tried to clap your ass before? Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. What happened? Can't do it. I've I've not only tried it once. I've tried it many times. <laughs> Same. Can you do it? You have a good yeah, wiggle. Blah, 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 blah. I can't do it. I yeah. don't, don't. You're you're also I working know. with what God gave you. Yeah, I just don't think I have like the like the. I got the fast twitch athletic muscles. I don't have the like the, 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 the something about the hip movement. Yeah. I've, tried. I've watched videos on how to do it. it. It's. I mean, we could maybe try. try it. We could try to do it together sometime. <laughs> Maybe there's a whole episode on that. Maybe we'll find in. You said you were going to go get more coffee before we started this. And I went to go get more coffee too, because you said you were going to get more coffee. Yeah. But I've been wondering if I've been drinking too much coffee lately. How much That's coffee do you drink on a day-to-day basis? Like uh, too much, but I think- Like the limit does not exist? I think what happens for me is I fill up my pot in the morning and I always grind my own beans, contrary to- Me too. Food. Duncan, I do not mess around with my beans in the morning. Me neither. Okay. I go to a local coffee roaster. I put the base, my coffee makers in the basement so that I don't wake the kids up with the bean grinding. You're a good mom. It's not because I'm a good mom. It's because I want that time. Oh, yeah. That, okay. Yes. I don't get that time. So it sounds great. Thank you for letting the kids sleep. But it's really... About your alone time. Yeah. So I grind the beans and then I, in a coffee pot, I have like the old school Cuisinart that is still top of the reviews. Agree. Okay. Is that the one? No, we got like the, my husband loves like the coffee thing and he got the, the like fancy ninja coffee maker and I hate it compared to the Cuisinart that we had. It's, they complicated a good thing, a good, they made all these. I'm ready to throw it out the door and get go back you can just have your own coffee he can have his and you can have yours i can't deal with all those machines though there's one more thing thing. get that shit out of my face (laughs) so you asked me a simple question which was how much coffee (laughs) when you fill up that cuisinart eight cups is not eight cups you do okay. So do you I have the small I, one, like six to eight. no? It's a big dog. The twelve cup pot. Yes. So I fill. I think it's yeah, ten or twelve, and I fill it up to like the six, seven, eight mark. That's not eight cups of coffee. Well, it's cup like this, eight ounce cup. Yeah, like no, so, no. we're par right. I'm eight of these. I'm yeah. I drink a half a pot of coffee. Yeah, two and a half. day. That's about a pot, right? About a half a pot, like six cups is like a half a pot or a half. Yeah. You know, these, especially when it's cold out, I go half calf. Oh yeah. Because if I went full calf, I would be like shitting my pants <laughs> and also like shaking on the floor. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it no, would be a bad reaction. I think my ADHD maybe is just like <laughs> it. Caffeine doesn't make me cray cray, but I also can't have it late in the day because I won't sleep well. Mm. It's a little morning thing. Morning thing. But I'm just going to, I'm going to pepper you with some things that are on my mind as if we are Hoda and freaking Jenna. Rock and roll. I love Hoda. She retires. She's great. I love that woman. Yeah. She's got nice vibes. Very great vibe. Mm. I'm going to sit on a couch with her and have the, the coffee. And make yeah. Coffee for Hoda. Jenna too. They're a good little team. Too bad. But good for Hoda. Hoda's got the the world is her oyster. Yeah. And she left at the top of her game. Absolutely. Speaking the top of his game. 
What do we think of that? That gives me the ick. It's he's not. I mean, this isn't zaddy vibes. It doesn't even like. I don't. I'm not mad at him for that. I'm just like, cause like whatever he can, so he's doing it. Oh, but he, like no for has. her, I'm kind of like, you really want that on top of you? I don't. Know. So here's the deal. I'll admit, I was never in my. Do you think he wears his cut off sweatshirt when they're doing it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Doesn't <laughs> give a flying fuck. He wants to cover his titties. Yeah, he doesn't care. You think he cares? No. Like, whatever. Cool. Let's go on my yacht or my boat. But I never in my life have been into older men. That's mm. my preference. When I, I remember being hit on when I was like 19, being hit on by a 30 year old, and I thought it was like repulsive. Like, <laughs> freaked me out. It freaked me out. I feel like it is, I'm not, it's not an ageist thing. Like there is, I think, an age appropriate window. Totally. But it's a personality thing for me. It's like a, it's like a, it's a chemistry, like a, a vibe chemistry for what is attractive to me. What's your type? I don't know. I mean, you know, I would say like my husband is my type, but like f- physically, it's not like I've always gone after guys that look like him. It's yeah. just that he is so fucking cool and great to hang. He's such a good hang that that's my type because he was that's- like my best friend before yeah. we hooked up with each other. Love that for you. I love yeah. that for me. I love yeah. that for all of us. Yeah. And then that worked, like the chem- the chemistry translated. Is this somebody that you will see online and you're like, they're just doing it? Yes, but I don't know who they are. Okay. okay. I don't, I mean, my all time, like most handsome, like sexiest celebrity is such a f- basic, obvious choice. Brad Pitt. Okay. Okay. I and never, it's also I never went through a Brad Pitt. Pit. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's just, but you know why? It's yeah. because of the characters he plays and the way that he plays the characters. Okay, more than anything, like Brad Pitt in a river runs through it. I'm like, yeah, this like Ryan Gosling in never the, did it for me. See, in the Notebook, I just wanted I wanted some I want somebody to be in love with me like that and mm. like me a little because I'm a head case like she was in the movie it's mm. I was about to watch that movie with my daughter this past weekend and we ended up not watching it is it have you watched it with Layla I have not no would I, you is I'll it appropriate see, there's a few little too yeah. sexy yeah I think so. okay good think to know because so. I was I kind of was like she'll probably love this but I can't it's been so long since I've seen it and I was like is it heavy it's it's pg-13 but it was like 15 years ago pg-13 there's some moments that you're like whoa okay maybe just like no but i am you are so not invited to my bar mitzvah can't recommend that one enough to watch oh yeah oh great adam sandler yeah his daughters his two daughters and his wife are all in the movie oh that's so cute it's awesome it's like preteen mode all right. Watched it a thousand times. Like my son too. So that's a bit, that's a good one for family. Maybe that's this weekend's business. I think you'll like it. Let me now report back to me. Okay. So moving on. Um, have you heard of the Lieutenant Dan? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I know. Mention it before it's like washed away, but it's also not washed away. So tell me what you've heard. I just know that there's this whack job who's out on his boat in Florida and weathering the storms literally yeah. and he's been dubbed Lieutenant Dan. Yeah. And I believe he's still alive. Yes, he's he he made it through. Now here's here's where my mother uh what do you call it T- is it tentacles feelers? Yes, okay. Yeah. Immediately when all of a sudden all these people were recording Lieutenant Dan. So he was the man in his boat, homeless, living in his boat. So he's not home. Is he homeless if he's living in a boat? I don't know. But he was like, I'm not going anywhere during the Tampa storm. And people yeah. were like, the dude's going to die. So, so many people went out to the dock and started saving him. Now, here's why I want to talk about 
social media and what I cannot stand about it. Okay. It these streamers, right? These young adult streamers. So these guys, there's like a, a like a, there's a love triangle between these three guys because they all saw Lieutenant Dan. One kid, I think Tampa Terrence, listen to me. I'm like in this. Tampa Terrence, Deep. I genuinely wanted to help Lieutenant Dan and started to go fund me for him. Okay. Now, here's what I don't like about GoFundMe's is you know nothing about this man and you're putting out a GoFundMe and it's gone viral. And now you have what, like $400,000 collected for this man. Because this guy wants to be an idiot on his boat in a category five hurricane. Ter right? He, Tampa Terrence definitely saw, I can be a hero right now. Like Mr. Beast has been for so many people. So I think- there's a lot of people that want to do good for others, but me coming from the corporate social background that I did in corporate is like, we need to vet these things out. So now you've got all this money. His daughter, Lieutenant's daughter, Lieutenant Dan's daughter catches winds of all this money being raised for her like deadbeat dad and comes on is like, you don't know him. Oh, my father. So yeah. like, in the world we live in like this opportunity to help this man that didn't ask for anything. And now he's got all this money. He's got a live stream. People got him equipment so that he can make money on TikTok. And I'm like, this is just where, like, I want to do good in the world and I want to be a humanitarian, but like. So I got to tell you, I just couldn't, I just couldn't be bothered. I just don't waste my energy on it. Cause it's like, first of all, I know who that Lieutenant Dan guy is. I've heard like yeah. whisperings of him. Ha mm -hmm. I have not done any of my own like rabbit holing on him at all. Cause I don't give a fuck. Right. You know, you know what I do care about though, is like people are putting their money into this thinking that it's going into the right hands. And it's like, we got to just, some people ruin it for others, right? There are going, yeah, but they're that just idiots then they're just right. all right. a bunch of idiots. Meanwhile, and I'm like, I can't save you. And the relief I, fund needs. Yeah, put that towards the actual matters. cause. So anyway, lesson learned is like, just be careful with who you want to raise money for, GoFundMe's, all that stuff. Yeah, I try not to get my like emotions too attached to things going in, on in the outside world in that way, because you could literally drive yourself insane if you like let it get to you, all of it, you know? Yeah. And especially I'm with the climate money. today and just yeah. the divisiveness and the, you know, the hardcore opinions that everybody has about everything. And you're entitled to that. But like, I don't need to take on your emotions over issue X, Y, and Z. Like I will deliberate the way that I feel about those things on my own or you I'm know. just sad that we're in a world where everybody wants like a viral moment. A viral moment, everybody, yeah. But there's so many people. I want a viral viral. moment, but I want it to just be about trying to clap my ass cheeks, you know? Girl, you are doing the viral moment. Which is important. Full authenticity. <laughs> um, speak, wait, I want to hear a funny story though? Because like go back to, to Tampa Terrence and I have to, I'm over here preaching. <laughs> He just wanted this viral moment. And all I can think about is two years ago. So I was on, I was on TikTok. I was like, oh my God, we pulled into a Target parking lot and there was a man playing the violin with like a tip thing out. And he's playing this beautiful violin music. I'm like, I am going to record him. I have to post his Venmo. I could make this guy, you know, like I, I could save this guy's life. Are you ready? We recorded him. I gave him a tip. Me and my kids, I said, I'm like showing him that. I said, is it okay if I record you? And I could tell by his body language that something was off. I watched the video back later. He's not he, playing it. He wasn't playing the fucking guy. I just spit all over my screen. He yeah. wasn't playing the guy. He wasn't playing the violin. He was lip syncing. The yeah. violin to the music playing on the speaker. Yeah. I was almost Tampa Terrence. 
Yeah, I see a lot of that. Well, not anymore as much, but when I was living in New York City, just like in the subway stations and stuff, and just like see, seeing people playing music down there, and some of them are legit and amazing, and then some of them are like, you're so full of shit, get out of here. Taught in Massachusetts, I was like this, oh, look at this man <laughs> out here playing Celine Dion on his violin. He's really <laughs> working for this girl. I was, I have to find the video. I think I should find the video. Oh and my God. Here somehow when I post this. He's the next Lieutenant Dan. I mean, he's probably chosen a new parking lot after me. <laughs> after the encounter with me. <laughs> All right. Um, I interviewed Joe Frost on Monday, super nanny. Oh yeah. You know, I don't know if I should say this at some point she used to be following me and there was some post that I did and she made some comment about kids behavior on it and I was like I didn't even know who it was I just clapped back at it and I was like this is called a fucking joke you know and my girl Caitlin, I'm gonna have to talk to her about that. Yeah. Anyway, but she was great. I used to like that show that she did. What was it called? Something the super nanny. super nanny super yeah. nanny. Yeah. Wow. All right. This look at the scandal. I didn't even know I was gonna bring up scandal. My two guests. I know. Are- I pro- I probably shouldn't be you. saying that like in a-, uh, in a public forum. But but whatever. Who gives a shit? Listen, I. I- what I love is there are so many opinions about parenthood. There, like, Ugh. you and I are in a world where we could post something and it's taken 50 different ways. And you really have to know what you stand for to be online and to be able to share moments that are vulnerable, right? You do. You do. And honestly, like, w- when I answer people in comments, I'm not like actually riled up right. when I'm answering these people. I think that there was a point in time back when I first started doing this stuff that I was actually riled up and like I could feel like I, I needed to defend myself and be like, you must not know about me, you know, but <laughs> um, at this point, it's just like for fun when I right back to trollish type comments. But that's what the yogis are trying to teach us, right? That's what being mindful and present is about is like how, when you let someone really affect you, that means you need to still work on shit. I'm telling myself that mm. every day in co-parenting. Mm. Yes. It's like, like the, this you're is not about me. Let's not respond. Don't yes. Work up. Yeah. Hard that's that practice. next level. Zen stuff. Like it's all like the things that trigger you are your ego coming into play. Right. And you're like, why do I have to prove this to some person? I don't need, I, I'm going to release my ego. I want to release my ego right now. <laughs> you're right. I get worked up about a lot of stuff and I am still working on like, why did that bother me so much? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Um, what I always want to talk about is what keeps you up at night. Oh yeah. Um, it's keeping you up at night. I'll tell you. Yeah. The lack of consistency in my life keeps me up at night because oh, like deeper. the way that you're like our lives are as content creators and stuff, like I don't necess- I don't have an office like situation that I go to at a certain time every day and get this job done and da 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 da. Like every day is is very different. It's not just content creators. I guess it's anyone who's in like a creative um, type of job. Yeah. And then on top of that, with my kids varying schedules each day and each afternoon, that I I kind of feel like I can't find my way out of a fucking wet paper bag half of the time. Like I'm just like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like, what what is happening tomorrow? You know, I think it's just that like lack of a grasp on my life and routine that wakes me up at night, keeps me up. 
And then I feel like I have to figure everything out. Like, and then I'm like, okay, let's plot this out in my mind. What am I going to do tomorrow? How am I going to get this done? Are you Who's a gonna... procrastinator or are you a good task? Well, if you save it to the last minute, it only takes a minute. I know. <laughs> I have like brand po- I- I'm terrible with brand posts. Like I, if any company, I don't think I've ever been on time like to the oh really oh god those that would stress me out i am like time no i get all of my shit done because i like when i have actual deadlines you're like my husband my husband like in we went to college together and he would like not turn papers in at like the time that they would be due and i would be like who do you think that you are and then he would just do it on his time like, I think he stayed at college, like, over Thanksgiving break one year because he had to finish up, like, three papers. And it's so stupid. It's so <laughs> I do it all the time. And guess what? My daughter, being a fourth grader, guess what their new thing is? What? Teachers are like, we're going to give them all their homework on a Monday at parent-teacher night. This is what I was told. We're going to give them all their homework for the week on a Monday. Oh. Monday, they could do it a little bit per night. Any they, they, they budget on Thursday. No one, the teacher never told my kid that. Guess what Layla does? She waits till the end. Till the very flipping end. See, I would just do it all at once, but I would do it at the beginning. But that's what I mean. That's more Chase is like a nervous Nelly about mm. being late or that stuff. And then my daughter's like, I'll get it done. It's not a big deal. And I'm like, but why do you want that weighing on you? Meanwhile, her mom. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Why do, you, why do I want to wait? I, I, I got boxes over here. I have to film. Why am I waiting? Yeah. The rush. Yeah. The rush. I, the, the idea of me holding somebody else up is, I think, that Oof. what keeps me on top of my game when I have to be. But. Yeah. It ebbs and flows. Certain things I prioritize over others. But your keeping you up at night thing is just there's no consistency. Yeah, I just feel like I don't know how my day is going to go ever. And that sometimes is very unsettling for me because I'm kind of a person who feels like they need a plan, but like I just can't have a plan. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Totally different totally different than me. If I had an actual exact plan every day, I'd, I'd be like bored. I, I, I know I would be too. So I'm like talking out of both sides of my mouth right now. And I don't want like a job that I have to go sit down at. Like when I was at a job that I was sitting down in a desk for, I was like, I do not belong here. I cannot do this. Like I need to be moving. I need to be doing something else. This is not for me. Yeah. So that's, that's a positive side and being a mom, that's a positive side of social media is I think we are exposed to all the different things you can do in your life. Yeah. When we graduated high school, do you remind, I'm older than you, but when we graduated high school, didn't you feel like there were only a handful, maybe a, a dirty dozen things that you'd even consider going in like Totally. Yeah. Like this was not on the table. Not at all. And I'm not saying that I I would push my kids to do content, but on content, there are people doing a bunch of different things in life. Yeah. Or even just using social media for your business in whatever way that you're doing it. Right. Yeah. I'm being exposed to like, Hey, I mean, my daughter was asked by her pediatrician, what you want to be when you grow up? She said a pharmaceutical rep. <laughs> and, and my doctor was like, Whoa, that is like, that's the first time I'm hearing that one. And it was, I asked Layla about it and it was because she likes the flex. She didn't use this exact word, but the flexibility. Yeah. You use your personality. To, yeah. Right. And, and it's, you can make a lot of money and you can make a lot of money and you get a company car and you bring doctors lunches. I was like, this bitch is like for real. Amazing. And my son, I don't, I think it's just like the hot moment that he just had a good experience with his dental hygienist, but dental hygienist right now. Oh yeah. I, um, I think I went through a phase because I like to like pick things and like clean things that like that and get down and dirty. Funny with him. Like she calls him out. She's like, Chase, you're the only kid that I have to wear like these blue gloves with because he doesn't like the smell of the green ones. Like literally they have a coil. Anyway, 
Oh my God. Well, he's so oyster. funny. Like world is your, that, that's the good part of social media. World is your oyster. Yeah. That's hundred to that one negative things I can mention about social media, but we'll stick with the good. Um, what's keeping me up right now, since you asked, I, um, what is Thunder Mountain Railroad is closed. Like, I know that sounds like really tough life if that's what I'm worried about. Thunder Mountain Railroad is so nostalgic for me and it's closed on our 2025 trip. They're refurbishing it. For repair or something? Just like it's due. It's okay. due for a re-up. It needs a revamp. And then they also announced this morning and people are up. It, it is just a passionate conversation. Disney is offering like this premium lightning lane thing starting soon and people are very upset about it. It's very expensive. So Why the- are they upset? Because they don't want to be getting yeah. cut by all the lightning lane people? No, it's like a lot. It's another upcharge. In order oh. to stand in line, it's another big upcharge. More to come on that. I'm going to interview some Disney people mm. for the podcast at some point. Molly? We have not yet done Disney. Oh. I've been to Disney multiple times. Okay. And you just... You just I I do want to take the kids there, but I've been kind of waiting for Lukey to reach an age where he will like remember it because I don't want to go. I know you like to go to Disney so much and I just, I'm like, you're amazing, but I just don't. I like do not want to do that year after year. I want to do one good trip and be like, okay, maybe we'll go back in a handful of years or something, but I get it. I just... I get it. My stepsister-in-law, what do you do when there's so much family dynamic, right? Modern family. My stepsister-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Camping. And my dad has a camper and he puts the camper in its, you know, campsites. And I dread the campsite and she loves the campsite. I said, you know what I said to her? I said, it's overstimulating to me. And she looked at me and goes, how is Disney not? I don't. Yes. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Do you think it's a wilderness campsite never happening? Like, is it is that overstimulating to you in a way that it's understimulating? Like, it's the only way I can describe it is like people like to sit around, but they are around people at all times. Yeah. Like on gra- like to me, they're on like gravel. They got like the fire pit. And there's all access like in and out of the campers. There's not a lot of room. Like, here's the thing about Disney. When I get back to my hotel room, I am so excited to just like shut the door and have my hotel room. I don't want the camper, like the person. I don't know. It's a head case thing. I don't have my camper life. Disney all day, all day. I can go three times a year and enjoy it, but I don't because of the money. And also I don't want the nostalgia to wash away at all. Yeah. Like the once a year. Are you on your third year of going? Is that right? So we did 2019 with Jeff. And then I missed 2020. And then we did 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. With just Holy shit. Yeah. 19, 21, 22, 23. So this is your fifth? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Kids love it. We talk about it all year round. It's like a bond thing. It's like something I'll never get back yeah. when I'm old and, you know, on my scooter. Oh, my God. Hot countries. Here comes mom. <laughs> Just my, like, I'm I'm forming this, like, bond thing that will forever be in our hearts. I love that for you. The heroism thing in me. It's weird. I mean, it's... It's, I could never do it, but it's just, I honestly find it incredible. Oh, thank you. Listen, I, I could talk about it all day passionately, <laughs> but I don't because I'd scare plenty of people away if I just did Disney content. And I'm like, let's talk about something else. Yeah, no, let's switch. <laughs> do you have a favorite video right now? Like of this week, what, did you piss oh. you with any one video? <laughs> I did post this video of these guys from like some Austrian choir who just all like were standing in a line, like only using their tongues to sing. And they were like, (laughs) it's just like, this is disgusting and so funny all at once. And so bizarre that it just really made me laugh. Um, 
Yeah. I tend to like odd things like that. Yes. I (laughs) couldn't agree more. Um, hold on. I'm going to just see if I can. Did you have a fave? Oh yeah. I, I think I, did I send it to myself this morning? I did. I sent it. Did you send it to me yet? I I cannot, I don't, I shared it the other day. I cannot stop laughing at it. I'm going to try to show it here. It's this guy parasailing. He, he's afraid of heights, but he wanted to surprise his girlfriend with a paraglide, a paragliding, whatever it is. I, I cannot. No, you have to. Ready? Can you hear it? So she's saying my boyfriend surprised me. I can't hear her. <laughs> What's he saying? He thinks he's falling out and he's like, I'm basically fucking standing up. I'm basically fucking standing up. She's like, relax, you're fine. But then the poor guy is in distress and everybody's like, it's fine. Watch the end shot of him. Are there Brits? Relax, ready for the last shot. Look at (laughs) his his shorts. But he's pinned straight, the poor guy. Just relax, just relax. And he's literally falling through the straps. I can't, stuff like that, I just can't get enough of. Uh, Oh, God, content. So good. Anything else you want to leave anybody with for this Caitlin Murray? Are you going to work out today? I have to. I have to. What are you going to do? Um, I'm big on the walks right now. Me I'm too. Going for a good old Me too. Walk. I feel like my system goes through phases where it's like, all right, we want to lift heavy weights. Or then it's like, I just want you to just walk and de-stress and take it easy on your body and work on your deep core or something like that. And now I'm in that phase right now. So do you listen to your body? I try to listen to my body. Like I always love to exercise, but I, I do what like feels sustainable for me. I love that. That's like a tip that I don't think anybody says because there's all these people who are healthy and wellness and fit. And they always have this, like these tips that I'm like, that's not me. You mm-hmm. just know that I am mindful. I listen to what I need. I know when I need something walking right now, my knee sublexed a few times this week. And I'm like, mm. I'm Google probably if that happens during perimenopause. Yeah. Talk about lock shoulder. Mel Robbins has talked about like locked oh, up. Oh yeah. That's, that's a, that's like a real full symptom, right? Yeah. But Frozen I'm, shoulder. I'm, frozen shoulder. I have yeah. knock on wood, haven't gotten that, but I'm wondering if my knee sublex is like either I need to lift or I'm what's a, what, what is that? A sublex? What's that? It means what? that like I, I moved the wrong way the other day and it like popped out to where I couldn't bend it or not. Oh, where- that happens to me too. I think it's your IT band. And does it so sort like, of like snap this. and then it kind of clicks back? Yes. But and then it, it hurts. After that. And then it hurts for like a couple of days after like it throb, like it's aching pain. Yeah. So we probably have a similar issue because of that like very long IT band. Like you have super long femurs too. Like me. Yeah. I have IT well, band like, issues like, out the ass. Our whole life and now like their yeah. knees are like, girl, we did a lot for you. Like, That's been happening to me for years, uh, though, okay. at random, like very random times. But it's usually when I'm really tight. Well, that's the thing. I had done squats like two days before that. Mm-hmm. So and that I makes just sense. Moved to get off a chair when my son's friend was here, and my Chase is like, "Mom, come on!" I'm like, I'm "Fucking stuck." Yeah, and it really hurts when you finally when it clicks back over or whatever. Yeah, you just gotta relax yeah your body and let it. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're the only other person that I've ever talked to that has this happened to them. Twinning. Twinning. Um, Yeah. I'm probably going to do a walk today too, but I was always like, I was always want to ask you what you're going to be doing and stuff. Are you listening to a podcast when you walk? Are you listening to music? Are you listening to the the sound of the nature? I'm usually listening to a podcast okay, or what? a book on tape. 
what will you listen to today? Um, well, I'm writing my book right now. So I'm trying to listen to other like nonfiction essay type books that are sort of in keeping with the style of the book that I'm writing to like be in that mindset. Girl, can you tell us anything about the book? Or is it like... Sure. Yeah. I haven't even posted about it yet because the thing about books is like the process is very long. And so you're in this whole writing phase of it. And then once you're done, kind of like you turn in the amount of words that you're contracted to write. Like my word count is 65,000 words. So I'll turn that in in like a year from now, pretty much. And then... or sooner if I finish it sooner which I I hope to do but then after that there's like this whole editing process obviously and you have to like get it right and perfect to the writing and stuff like that and then there's this whole like pre-sale process you know you hear this all the time like on social media pre-order my book pre-order my book what the fuck does that mean pre why would I pre-order your book why can't I just order it when it's here you know I hate that (laughs) like because they kind of want to get an idea of the sales of these things anyway this all to say to make a long fucking story short that I don't want to talk about it for that fucking long so I just haven't started talking about it yet because I'm going to be sick of hearing myself talk about the fucking book if I start talking about it now right but I will tell you that it is a collection of short stories that are nonfiction, just all about like life my life motherhood but there are things like in my childhood in there and in my 20s my wild and crazy 20s in New York City and blah 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 blah. so it's just different stories yeah I love yeah. I short love stories that. oh, that's all I can read yeah because it's right that's like all. it's good for moms because you're just like all right I'm too tired to read this full, for the novel. soul but like modern day Caitlin Murray yeah the love sure. for the soul because it was just short stories yeah there were like five of those books chicken soup for the soul now chicken soup for the soul 17 i was gonna say they must be on like episode i don't know something by now I i'm gonna look know. into that another thing i'm gonna google after this that's irrelevant to the rest of my life <laughs> Suck. Meanwhile, I got all these brand deals sitting over here that are going to make me money. And I'm like, let's see where Chicken Soup for the Soul is. Let's find out where they're going now. And then it will bring me down a whole other (laughs) rabbit hole. All right. I love you. Love you too. Keep this mashup sweet and to the point, even when there's no point. Bada boom. (laughs) I love you. I love you, Nick. Go make that ass clap. Yeah, girl. Pop, 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 and make it clap. <laughs> Love you.